If our lives be short, let our fame be great. Such was the answer the Nart people gave when a small sparrow was sent to them by God to ask if they would rather be many in number with long and easy lives or be few and short-lived, but whose glory would live throughout time. Their legends still echo across the Caucasus, but sadly, that echo is getting fainter. So to honor that cry from long ago, it's only fitting we tell one of their tales today. We'll start with an old one. Perhaps one of the first to be told. The Tale of a Golden Tree. <laughs> the Narts had among them a tree that was the aureate hue of the light after sunrise, or the gilt pommel of the finest sort. But this tree wasn't merely golden. It had a magic to it, unheard of in other trees. Any apple that began to sprout from it would be fully ripe by nightfall. And those apples wouldn't just be normal apples either. They were white as snow on one side, and of the richest, deepest red on the other. And any woman who was infertile, if she ate the white side, would conceive a daughter with hair of the palest white. And if she ate from the red side, she would have a son with the same snow-touched locks. But one day, when the Narts awoke, they found that there were no apples under the tree. At first, this didn't disturb them greatly, for the other apples were beginning to sprout, and by the next day, they would be ripe. But when the next day came, they found that those apples were stolen as well. So, the Nart called together a council of their wisest people to decide how they might catch this thief. After some deliberation, the council decreed that a guard should be set by the tree. But it was for naught. For the next day, when they woke, they found the apples had once again been stolen. So again, the council deliberated, and this time they said, We shall put a fence of thorns around the magic tree. So a high fence of vicious thorns was built. But this too was for naught. The next day, the apples had once again somehow been stolen. So like clockwork, the council met a third time. And at this meeting, they decided to take no chances. We shall post an entire band of horsemen around the tree, so that no one might slip by. And thus, a host of horsemen, each armed with weapons made for war, took up position around the tree. But even this, say it with me now, was for naught. Because the next morning, the apples were gone again. And there was no trace of the thief. None of the horsemen could recall having seen anyone the entire night, and not a footprint nor hoof mark was found to indicate the thief's passage. But there were two brothers, known throughout all of the land for their prowess in battle, who said that they would sit watch. Legends say their arrows never missed their mark, and their swords never failed to bite. They were the Nart's last hope. And so as night fell, they sat by the golden tree and waited. After many hours, the elder brother began to doze off. But just as he fell deep asleep, the younger brother saw something through the gloom. It was... Three white doves descending upon the tree. He turned to wake his brother, but seeing that the doves were about to take off with the apples, he turned and shot his bow. His arrow wounded one, and blood flowed freely from it. Yet it still carried off its apple and escaped. He took out his kerchief and dabbed at the blood, then shook his brother awake to show him and tell him what had happened. Immediately, the elder brother sprung up and said they must follow this trail of blood to wherever the doves landed. And so they rode, mile after mile after mile, following a seemingly endless trail, until at last they came to the shore of the Sea of Azov. But that's where the trail ended, right at the waterline. So the younger brother turned to the older and said, If we turn back now, we disgrace not only ourselves, but our whole family. The dove came to this sea, and I will find them. Stay on this beach. Wait one year for me. If I have not returned by then, no I am dead. With that, the younger brother drew his sword and struck the waves with such a mighty force that the sea parted and he stepped onto the seafloor, reminding all of us at home that myths are metal! There in the depths, shadowed by great walls of water, he walked and walked, until at last he came to a ravine filled with mist, within which he found a house of the whitest white, and entered. 
As he crossed the threshold, seven identical brothers appeared and began to follow him. They bowed in unison and offered him great hospitality. Two women then entered and brought a small table and laid upon it water and food. At first, this hero of the Narts only saw a scrumptious meal, for he was famished from his great journey. But then, as he was digging into the food, his hand alighted on something familiar. It was one of the apples. How is this here? he asked. This is the object of my quest. The seven brothers had all sat as one, but on hearing this, they all rose and said, Since you have been honest with us, we shall be too. We are the children of the Lady of Flowering Waters. Our three sisters used to go and fetch apples for our meals every day, but one was injured and now lies bleeding in her bed. We fear death is near. How can I help? asked the young hero. There can be no helping her. To save her, we would need some of the blood that was shed. With that, the young man sprung to his feet and said, Then perhaps I can help. He withdrew his kerchief and handed it to the seven strange brothers. They wet the cloth and pressed it to their sister's wounds. And right away, the wounds began to close. Astounded, they said, Never have we met such a hero. And as soon as the sister was recovered, she and our young hero got married. Because as we've learned from all of these myths, quote-unquote romance back in the day was a little different. At last, our hero set off for home. Meeting his brother on the seashore, he introduced him to his new wife. And triumphant, they all headed back to Nardia, where the marriage was met with a great feast. And that's how the sea gods became part of the Nart tribe. Okay, everyone. Who's hungry? Oh, that was, um, that was a crab apple. Ugh. Legendary thanks to patron Kyle Murgatroyd. 